On Tuesday, locals gathered at CDIA on Moody Street and at Backpages Books to meet the author of a new book about a bizarre antifreeze murder in Waltham several years ago. And there was a lot of information that the police had found that wasn't admissible in trial that really went to show who this person was and uh, all the people that he had deceived and all of the fake backgrounds he had created. And that really was information that people needed to know if they wanted to know the whole story of this case. In 2008, James Cowan was sentenced to life in prison for poisoning his wife Julie to death with spiked Gatorade in 2004. Although Lara Bricker's book Lie After Lie provides fascinating backstory about a master deceiver, the book is as much about a Waltham police officer who refused to give up on the investigation. After I met John Bailey, I, I really I felt so compelled to tell his story because he was somebody that had invested four years of his life. Julie Cowan, a nurse, had slipped into a coma and died at Newton Wellesley Hospital after ingesting a fatal dose of ethylene glycol, the sweet odorless ingredient in antifreeze. Her husband James, an ambitious former radio show host, was enrolled at Harvard Business School. Both Missouri natives, they telecommuted to jobs back home while renting this duplex on South Street. To those around them, an upwardly mobile and happy young couple. Nobody had any reason to believe that James would do this. They had a you know, a, a picture-perfect relationship. No arrests had been made and no direct evidence against Cowan had emerged by the time he returned to Missouri. But Bailey, the head of the Triad Police Program for Waltham Seniors, learned early on that he was a liar. You know, uh, one of those things was uh, he went to CBS on Hobbit Street. Um, we went to CBS, I went through hours of uh, videotape, uh, he wasn't there. Um, so that usually is an indication that uh, you know, he, he lied to us, so there's probably something going on there. Uh, another red flag, the reason that he actually came out here uh, with Julie was uh, because he told the family that he had received a full scholarship to Harvard uh, Business School. And uh, we found out uh, early on that uh, that was not true. The book peels back the layers behind Cowan's growing lies, which forced him to forge documents and even impersonate references on his resume. He actually posed as some executive from ABC News and wrote an email, which I don't know why somebody didn't pick up on this, saying, greetings from foggy old London. And it all seemed to work, especially on Julie. Even after he was convicted, many friends and family were still in disbelief that Cowan could have killed her. Years into the investigation, what broke the case were statements from witnesses about James urging his wife to drink Gatorade to keep her electrolytes up. Uh, Sam Shoemaker, who actually told us that James told him, uh, that James Cowan had told him that he saw Julie drinking from a Gatorade bottle the night he took her to the hospital. Uh, that was the first time we had actually had anybody tell us that, that James made that statement. But then the most, what really I think led to the conviction in this case were the computers. It turned out that Cowan had left almost everything in that duplex on South Street. He left his wife's wedding dress, her wedding ring, his, you know, sleigh bed, which was, you know, an expensive piece of furniture, but he took the laptop. Searches on each of their laptops showed that Julie wasn't suicidal, as the defense alleged, but wanted to have a baby. Meanwhile, her husband had been looking for poison recipes online. Although Cowan's motive was a $250,000 life insurance policy, he might also have been driven to kill by his own insecurities. To, to James, appearance was everything. And he was all about portraying himself as much more important than he actually was. Rather than his wife seeing him for that person, in his twisted logic, it was better for him to kill her than for her to see who he really was. For Waltham News Watch, this is Chris Wangler.